My grandmother was a full-blooded Indian. There are no documents about us. Hi, I'm Dexter, and let's talk Caribbean genealogy. In this video, I'm going to talk about the misconceptions that many of us have that may be holding us back from learning more about our family history. The first misconception is there are no documents about us. <laughs> Don't even bother looking. That is absolutely untrue. There are just so many records, it is mind boggling. If you think really carefully about the West Indies and from a historical uh, sense, the great powerhouse of wealth generation uh, was agriculture in the West Indies with um, enslaved Africans being, well, free labor, really. <laughs> they worked people to death. Uh, the, the money that was being generated, so vast amounts of, of money. Um, they're meticulous records. I mean, owning slaves back in the 18th century was like owning Apple shares or Amazon shares or, or whatever. They were just so high value and these were really highly um, sought after um, property at this point in time. So yeah, there are lots of records about about the islands and the people that lived there. Next misconception is that all black people were slaves. Yeah, this is also not true. There was quite a significant community of free people of colour living um, during the time of enslavement um, in the West Indies as well as in North America. These free people were roughly 10, maybe 12% of the, of the population, in some places a, a little bit more than that. And these were a combination of people that were formerly enslaved or people that were children of someone that formerly was um, enslaved, or these were people that um, were never enslaved. So you've got to recognize that um, if you do descend from a line of free people of color, there will be um, more documents and the documents will go further back. It's very misguided to assume immediately that everyone must have been in enslaved. I come from two lines of, of free people of color and um, this just blew my mind. And you've got to test that assumption that you've got and realize that um, some things are a little more complex and there's more to it. Next misconception is, oh, but we spell our name with an E, so we cannot be related. Spelling was very fluid uh, in, the, in the past. There was low literacy at that point. People spelt things um, phonetically and some people were able to then cross check and say, oh no, you spelt my name wrong. Um, you know, if you could read and write, but if you couldn't, then you couldn't ask anyone to, to, to correct any, any errors. So sometimes it's just really weird. And sometimes, you know, just names are just completely butchered. You've got to really do your research and um, just cross check all of the information, particularly in the Virgin Islands. There are some, um, some Dutch uh, names that have been anglicized. And so that's that's something to consider some French names as well um, and also um, sometimes people just they just decided that they were going to spell it in a particular way so for example in my family I've got the line let some at some point um, in the uh, 19th century people started spelling it with an e and now we've got it with an e so um, it doesn't mean that just because you come across a record that doesn't have that exact spelling of the first name or the surname that that person uh, was not um, your, your ancestor. Additionally, at the point of emancipation, formerly enslaved people, they sometimes went by different names. I know this makes it even more complicated when you're trying to find um, where people were, but um, you know, there sometimes in the baptism record, you can see that there's a um, difference in, in the name. The next misconception, and maybe this one is a little bit more general and not just to Caribbean ancestry, um, but everyone thinks that they are 100% something. Now that's just not true. Um, it's very, very unlikely that um, you 
over the period of time with all of the migrations of people that you will then have one single uh, group um, that you descend from. It's just in the globalized world um, post um, 17th century, I really that's very unlikely particularly in the west indies where everyone came from somewhere else so we're, we're all being transported uh, for for various reasons we have to have a very open mind and just be prepared to have a lot of things that you deeply believe to be true to be challenged when you look at the records so Common one is, my grandmother was a full-blooded Indian. First off, what kind of Indian do you mean? A Southeast Asian person? Do you mean an indigenous person? And also, um, in what which particular area um, were they living? And um, in the Caribbean, we actually have quite a diverse population. And uh, it's not just um, African and European ancestry, but you know there could be some indigenous, there could be some Indian, there could be some Chinese. Just understanding a bit about the history can help give you some context. And if you've got ancestors coming from um, some places where there's still indigenous communities uh, to today, so we're talking Saint Vincent, Dominica, um, Puerto Rico. Um, there are actually quite a lot of descendants uh, that do have indigenous um, ancestry um, from, from those locations. So it's important to have an open mind um, about this. Uh, additionally, there are some uncomfortable things that you will have to consider as well in that um, the oral history might say, oh yes, indigenous person, Indian, whatever it was, but then when you then go through the record you then realize oh no actually this is a european ancestor historically it was actually illegal for mixed race relationships in some cases people were just absolutely frightened because having a child with uh someone outside of your your ethnic group could mean a jail sentence particularly with um, people that were african that had uh a child with a European person, whether that was consensual or not consensual. And the fear of having a, a custodial sentence really for this made some people just, just make it up and say, oh no, it, it was a, an Indian, an indigenous person, even though there are not any, any living there. They just told people that to avoid any further questions. So sometimes there could be some of this, it's not necessarily that people just lie but sometimes it was practical safety considerations at the time which led to this story being being um, handed down but when you start looking at the record you may uncover some of these uh, events happening and um, you know sometimes if you just go ahead and do DNA without any context this can really throw you and um, you just need to um, take that into consideration but thank you those are the misconceptions about tracing your Caribbean ancestry. Comment below and let me know. And if you like this video, like it and share with other people and um, subscribe if you want to get going on your journey in discovering your Caribbean ancestry.